Hello and welcome to a Thermosphere video about what you must know before your electric on the floor heating install. The first question we'd ask is what is your floor substrate? Now your floor substrate could be timber or it could be concrete. We'd use different insulation boards for each. We always recommend putting 10mm insulation board down because anything less than this can make the system less efficient. This is because heat travels by conduction and it's drawn to the layer of least thermal resistance. So if you put insulation board underneath your underfloor heating, your system will become much more efficient. The next question we would ask is what is your floor finish? Now you could have a wide range of floor finishes from tiles to stone to carpet to wood to vinyl. Any of these things can be heated. If you have a tile or stone floor, we have two systems in our range. There's a mesh system for any of your general installations and we have a membrane system for anywhere you need decoupling or waterproofing. If you're choosing a wood carpet or vinyl floor, we have a foil system, which is a floating system and completely dry lay. This means you don't have to have any wet trades. A couple of key points here is that if you're having a wooden floor, you need to check with the manufacturer that it is actually compatible with underfloor heating. And if you're having carpet, you need to make sure that your carpet and underlay combined does not exceed 2.5 top. So the next question we would ask is what is your available heating space? Now, what do we mean by available heating space? What we mean is the total floor area minus any fixtures in that room. So fixtures could be anything from kitchen units to floor standing toilets or vanity units or shower trays anything that the unfloor heating can't go underneath. Another consideration is that if there is any rugs or flat bottom furniture in the room, such as sofas, if there's no air movement underneath these items, it could lead to your floor overheating, which could cause degradation or your floor finish could discolor. If you are in a situation where you need to use your mesh or your membrane system for anything other than tile or stone, you will need to use a minimum of 10 mil self-leveling. Now, to work this out, we have a formula here that you can use, or you can get in touch with our great customer service team and they will help you out. The next question we would ask is how do you want to control your electric underfloor heating? We have a wide range of thermostats, all the way from the basic on off up down, all the way up to the smart home thermostat, which you can control from your smartphone. Any of these thermostats can be used for any of our systems and it's down to your preference and your lifestyle as to which one you choose. Another thing to consider is your electrical load on your electric underfloor heating. Sometimes if you have a very large area of electric heating, it can exceed the 16 amp limit on the thermostat. If this is the case, you can use a contactor snubber to take the load off the thermostat and allow that one thermostat to control the whole area. Now, you will have a Part P electrician on site to do your final connections so they can help you with the loading. Or if you're interested, we do have an equation to work it out for yourself. So, that's it. There's a few things that you must know before your electric underfloor heating install. Now you just need to go and install it. And we have a wide range of content from blogs to video installation guides to help you do this. Come and find out more on our website. Find out more information at www.thermosphere.com.